Hey, it's Sean from Tested. Today we are going to take a look at the SparkMaker FHD resin printer. Is that any good? Should you get one? Let's take a look and find out. So the SparkMaker FHD is actually the second version of the SparkMaker printer. They just finished up a successful Kickstarter. They did over seven times their goal, which is great. Um, the first one was kickstarted about a year ago, also successfully, obviously. Um, and they sent us one to check out. Uh, it's due out in November, both retail and rewards wise. And the retail version is going to run $4.99. The kickstarter version was $2.49. And good news, if you're interested in picking one up, they've continued that pricing for the foreseeable future on Indiegogo. We will provide links so you can check that out at the end of the video. Um, they are also offering a $99 upgrade kit if you have the first version and would like to get the higher resolution in the metal tank uh, of this one. You can get the kit and put it in yourself, which is a nice, a nice option. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about home 3D printing quickly. Uh, we have FDM the uh, filament printing. So it has a spool of plastic filament. It runs it through a hot nozzle, draws it layer by layer until you're done. You've seen us do tons of that. And that's probably the most common 3D printer you would find in the household. Uh, then you have SLA, stereolithography, which is resin printing. Uh, you get really, really high detail, typically higher detail than FDM printing with that. And it is using uh, some type of UV light source to harden and cure a liquid resin. Uh, it typically has the print uh, hanging from some type of platform that dips into the liquid resin tank. Uh, there is some kind of peel mechanism that will remove the print from the bottom of the print bed uh, and raise and lower it back down into the liquid to do the next layer. Um, uh, SLA generally refers to resin printers that use a laser to cure the resin, such as the Form 2, which has been a favorite of ours uh, for quite a while. There is also DLP, digital light processing printing, and that is basically using a video projector to flash the layer all at one time. Uh, typically, these would be a little bit bigger printer because you have to fit a projector in there. This is advertised as an SLA printer, but it is technically an MSLA printer, which is masked stereolithography. And this is, a, a, this is one that's being perfected right now. And basically what it is using is an LCD display down here in the base um, that just projects each slice onto it as a black and white image. So the white parts are just clear on the screen. The black parts are masked and keeps any light from coming through. Underneath that screen are a set of UV LED lights which shine through the clear part and cure the resin. So kind of a neat process um, and, it's, and it's showing up more and more in, on uh, lower end or cheaper uh, resin printers. And that's what we're using today. So the specs on the uh, SparkMaker FHD, uh, the print bed is not gigantic for something this size. It's about two and a half inches by four and a quarter inches by five inches. Um, I was able to fit this on it. You could maybe go a little bit wider, but that uh, represents the width and almost the height that you can go. Um, and so some people might be immediately like, well, <laughs> I can't fit anything on that. Well, with the high resolution of the resin printers, typically you're gonna be doing really high detail stuff like jewelry, you know, uh, miniatures and figures, little high detailed models, uh, etc. So if that is the type of thing that you need to print, uh, then the resin printer may be the way to go. Um, it is using a metal resin tank uh, that you can replace with uh, different ones for different resins. Uh, it has an FEP film bottom, which is this very thin Teflon-like material that the print will not stick to, which is key for this particular printer since it does not have a peeling mechanism. Typically, the tank would get tilted or move side to side to break the print loose. This is just relying on this ultra slick surface. It is a consumable that you can replace when needed, whether it gets damaged or eventually it will start the cloud from the UV light. And you can just unbolt this, put a new sheet in, bolt it back down. They have a few different resins available. They have the color resin, which is this kind of peachy one, which is what they sent me. It can be dyed with uh, different color pastes um, that you can mix your own colors with. I didn't have the paste, so I wasn't able to try that out. They have an ultra clear, a tough resin, 
and a high temperature resin that you could maybe make little molds for like uh, small scale injection molding. You will notice there is no interface on the printer other than this little light up knob which acts as the button and the control for moving this up and down in an SD card slot. There's no USB, no Ethernet, no Wi-Fi, none of that connection wise. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. The final version of this is supposed to be app enabled with Bluetooth. Um, so you should be able to start and stop and monitor prints from your cell phone. Since mine was a pre-production model, um, I didn't have that functionality enabled, so I was not able to test it. So let's talk about the software a little bit. It uses SparkMaker Studio, which was a surprisingly good piece of software. I did notice that it looks exactly like the software which is being used by the Anycubic Photon printer. So I don't know if this is an open source or collaborative or where the software came from for sure, but it did work well. Um, typically uh, with the resin prints, you might have an auto orient feature because how you position this on the print bed will generally affect how details come out and any stepping you might get um, from the resolution. So uh, this doesn't have the auto orient feature, but um, if you just do a little research, watch a few videos about how to properly orient resin prints, you should be fine. Uh, you also are going to need print uh, support structures for most of your prints. So like we have on our little guy here or the castle. And I found that it generated them very well. You had complete control over how big they were, the, the density of them, and they placed supports where I expected them to for resin printing. So bravo there. And for the most part, uh, they printed fine and um, supported the model like I would expect it to. You can even edit them, add and subtract them as needed, which was a nice feature. And you have control over uh, the resin settings. So um, they have presets for the four that they are carrying, but you can also uh, tweak the exposure time and uh, et cetera for, for the resin. So you could use, in theory, other types of resin in this that aren't made by SparkMaker, which is a nice, nice feature. Um, you can also set the resolution in there, which are pretty typical uh, set for resin printers. You can do 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.025, which is similar to something like the Form 2. So that is just how thick each layer will be. Uh, I printed all of this stuff at 0 0.05, which is generally my go-to, and I did a few tests at 0 0.025, and generally they turned out great. When you slice the models, what it is doing is it outputs a giant folder of image files, uh, PNG files, and they're just black and white images, kind of looks like an MRI, which represents the cross section of the model and what it needs to expose for each layer. Um, and generally, it did it fairly quickly as well, even when I was getting into like the 2000 range for layers, um, it didn't take too long. Which brings us to the prints. How were the prints? The prints were great. I was really, really impressed. Um, I have uh, some Form 2 ones that I did as a comparison, and I gotta say the detail on the SparkMaker FHD turned out really, really well. Um, if we look at, uh, as far as the layers, like something like the tentacles on the uh, scuttlefish here, I, they look great. I can see very few layer lines. Um, and I, I did notice that I get some stepping here on the curved body. And if you look at the scuttlefish from the Form 2, you'll notice we don't have any stepping in that same location um, or on the belly uh, like we do on the uh, Spark Maker uh, prints. Part of that is the pixels. So even at, uh, this is using a 1080 uh, LCD screen and which is gonna be a pretty fine pixel, but you have to think that um, you have certain restrictions when you have to draw with square pixels. So think about making a circle out of Lego. Even if you make it a pretty big circle, uh, you're still drawing that circle out of square blocks, so you're gonna get some stepping involved. Um, when you're using a laser, uh, you even if you took like one of those blocks and you turned it into a pen and you drew that same circle, with that pen, you're gonna get a nice smooth one. It might be a thicker line, but it's gonna be smooth with no stepping. So that's what you run into when you are doing the screen uh, technology printing that you're going to suffer somewhat from the pixels no matter what. Um, you can overcome some of this by how you orient the model and like you can kind of cheat it a little bit to try to get rid of those, but you're mainly gonna notice it on uh, curved surfaces such as this little test print that I did that are a series of spheres and I did one at 
0.05 and 0.025. And you'll notice on the 0.025, the layers this way, you don't notice that much, but you'll notice some stepping on the front of these, which didn't really go away um, from resolution to resolution. And that is a uh, artifact of the pixels of the screen. So just keep that in mind. It is part of uh, the function of the screen. Um, I did some really fine detail stuff like this little Rook, which is a standard resin test. It turned out great. Uh, it had a little tiny problem with the little filament inside, but I'm not too surprised by that because it's super, super fine. Um, our castle, which was my big print to take up the entire print bed, also turned out really well. The supports worked great. It did the hollow for the most part. There's some breakage on the little towers here, but that is due to their super, super fine detail, which I knew it would have trouble resolving. The Form 2 would have trouble resolving that as well, so that is not surprising. You will notice that it does have some stepping on the face of the castle. And once again, that is just uh, the nature of the, the screen and the pixels involved. Um, if I were able to do this straight up and down, that would have minimized this, but I had to tilt this a little bit to fit it on the print bed. Um, you'll notice this guy, <laughs> which is my, uh, it's technically a failed print because I ran out of resin. So the first time I did this, uh, I just left it solid because the, the model was solid. And um, I walked away from this, it was a 15 hour print, and it got this far and ran out of resin in the tank because the tank isn't real big and there's no sensor to tell you you're out of resin. Um, the second version, I hollowed it out and uh, it printed the entire thing with what was in the vat with some left over. I probably could have done another one of these or maybe half of one. So just keep in mind, if you have bigger solid objects, you may have to monitor a little bit. Um, okay, so prints, great. Uh, this, the print time on this, that's an interesting question. It's not the speediest printer. So let's say our little uh, assassin guy, he took eight and a half hours. Um, so this is him with his supports. On the Form 2, the same little guy uh, took about three uh, and a quarter hours. Um, the Scuttlefish, which is another one of my favorites to print, this took 14 and a half hours on the Spark Maker, and it took six and a half on the Form 2. And finally, the Castle, uh, this ran 15 and a half hours, and this is hollowed out, and it took about 10 on the Form 2. So there's some comparisons for you print-wise. Okay, the good. Decent software. I was pleasantly surprised by that. It gave you a fair amount of control over all of the details of your print. Good. Um, the linear rail and some of the hardware they use on this, I like that. The linear rail makes it nice and solid. I found that the build plate was relatively solid and didn't move around much. And the metal vats, which are an upgrade from the old plastic ones from version one, are a welcome change. Prints, great. I had no print failures. We already went over the detail of them. They turned out really, really well. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I like that they had the extra tanks available because if you are going to use the different resins that they offer, uh, you want a dedicated tank per resin. You do not want to have to try to clean this out every time and get every little nook and cr cranny clean to get the old resin out. I like that the FEP film is replaceable and they will be re uh, selling replacement sheets on their website. The bad. All right. So no interface, that is a bit of a bummer. That may be uh, remedied with the app enabled uh, aspect, which should be on the production model. Um, poor documentation. I was very disappointed in the documentation for this guy. Um, case in point, I got this hooked up, started it up no problem, leveled the print bed. I could not get it to print. I'd hit go and I would just get a mysterious flashing ring, which I had no idea what it meant after an email to support, I discovered that the slice files have to be put in a specific print-fhd folder on the SD card where it will not print. This is not mentioned anywhere in the documentation, which was really annoying. Once I figured that out, it was all good, but once again, a little bit better documentation would be welcome. Um, I found that it had a little bit of an evil electronic smell while running. Um, kind of not on fire electronic smell, but kind of new cheap electronic smell that lingered through most of this bottle of resin. It started to dissipate the longer I ran it, and at this point it is mostly gone, but at first it was pretty potent. 
um, which does bring up some concerns about the longevity of the hardware and the electronics. How long will these last? I don't know. Somewhere in the middle. So, you know, just observations. Um, speed, not the fastest, but it gets the job done and it makes nice prints. Um, just keep in mind, once again, no resin sensor and it has a relatively small tank, so you'll have to keep an eye on that during printing. Um, I had a few little hiccups as far as the build quality on this, which I don't know are because I had a pre-production model or if this will be true on the final versions. Um, my screen seems to be uh, held in place or sealed with just black electrical tape that is cut up. And I had a few little marks and dings on my screen cover here, which I was not able to remove, um, no matter what I used to clean it. I did find that this created a few minor defects in some of the prints, um, but this may have just been a fluke on my particular printer. Um, the longevity of the printer with the, uh, the quality of the components used or anything will, is yet to be seen. So, would I buy this printer? At the $4.99 retail price, I don't know if I would spend that money. I got very nice prints out of it, but I feel that there are other options out there that may be the same price or cost even a little tiny bit more that might be a better option. However, at the $249 Kickstarter slash Indiegogo price that it is still available at, I would go for it. Um, the prints turned out really well. Um, once I figured out some of the quirks with the documentation and the interface, it did work fine. It ran 15 hours or more, no problems, no failed prints. And as we said, the print quality was very, very good. If, you're, if you just keep in mind that there are some limitations due to the pixel nature of the LCD screen. So if you're looking to get into resin printing for cheap, um, you may wanna check out that Indiegogo price uh, while you still can. Now this is due out in November at the retail price, so I'm not sure how long that will last. So if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them on the site for us. We will link to the Indiegogo so you can check that out. Um, this has been the SparkMaker FHD resin printer, and I'm Sean from Tested.